Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, musician and composer, Jeremy Little. And now, Rich Redman. It's Rich Redman here. Yeah, another episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, Music City, USA, the last stop on the music business train. Choo choo. <laughs> I don't know how it sound. Is there, go, choo- is right there an effect the on there? Um, nope. That's nope, not, not going to work, buddy. That is totally not going to work. Jim, you're not fired. I need Sorry. you, buddy. So, how you been? How was your weekend? I have failed you. No, oh, it was good. good. It was so, good. were you glamping? Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks, weekends ago we did that. So most of the places that you go, are is there Wi-Fi? Is there uh, yeah. plumbing and the shitter? There is. Okay. Uh, there is, we, we go in a camper. We, we have plumbing. So but I tend to use the uh, the public restroom where you can shower. What possessed you to do this? Like, because it's something I used to do when I was a kid. Yeah? It makes good memories for the kids. Do your, do your kids like it? Or are they like, Dad wants to go camping? No, again. they like it. It's, you know, new places. We, you know, figuring out the places that are good for them in the first year is always a challenge. But, you know, finding those places we want to go back to, which is what we did this time. Do they stay off their phones? Are they in it? No, they're still on their phones. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's the wave of the future. It's how it's going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. dad's always on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually tinkering outside. I like to fix things and, you know, set fires and all that stuff. So, Do you, Can you make a fire like Tom Hanks and... and I yeah, made if I, fire. If I've got some fat wood and, you know, fire starters and stuff and a big old Duraflame log. But if you had to... Sure. That'd be tough. I'd just use a lighter. I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> I did the go-karts and all that kind of stuff. The uh, Oh, the, uh, the um, Pinewood Derby? Yeah. I was a Boy Scout. I don't think I made it very far. I probably got very bored and went back to practicing the drums on my little Blue Sparkle snare drum. Yeah, but you were a Boy Scout when you were about, what, 10, 11 years old? Now I'm still like a Boy Scout in the sense mm-hmm. that like, when I was my own drum tech, I would have two or three snare drums. I'd have heads. I'd have the tools. I That's the great be thing prepared. you learn about. Be prepared for yeah. all things. Now, what were you talking about about this coronavirus thing? You were talking about the well, cruise ship by industry. Now, by the time this, this podcast epi- episode airs... Uh, we're still this, alive. Well, not only that, but the coronavirus um, mania will have died down and something else will have permeated the media to scare the crap out of us. So, cause they always need something to scare you. They, you know, it's, it's part of their plan. That's how they drive ratings and revenue and make their money is fear mongering and having a boogeyman hiding in the closet. Yeah. So you, there, we talking about the cruise ship industry and they yeah. have, they have ex- actually yeah. a, a leg to stand on for. Well, now there's uh, well, I'm just, I just told you there was a cruise ship in uh, off the coast of California that is being sequestered and quarantined because of some reported cases of the virus. Yeah, what rappers from Long Beach? LB, the LB. He's an old school rapper. LL Cool J. Yeah, no. Um, Fifty Cent. No, the one that's in everything, man. He's got LL own- Cool J. No. Mama said, "Knock you out." Oh man, if I knew Kara, M&M. Kara knows. No, he's he's super super skinny and tall and goes way back. Snoop, Snoop, Snoop Loop. You know who gave you the answer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite people, musicians, film and TV composer, Jeremy Little. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Good to see you. I, we love having you here. Uh, One of the many reasons to visit with you is that. Do you love coffee? I do. Um, <laughs> I like the Rich Redmond. <laughs> yeah. These things are so popular. We're going to uh, start getting them mass produced. Is that you're always so dapper and so put together with Thank ascots you. and scarves and and just the my favorite colors, black and red. There you go. But that was, I think, as, I mean, it was a side product of you going to L.A. 18 years ago. Because I don't remember when I met you in 2000, 2000, 2001, you weren't quite as snappy of a dresser. No, I was a jeans and t-shirt guy right? at that point, yeah. Because so you and I, in 2001, 2002, we were in a post-apocalyptic power pop band called Front Row for the Meltdown. <laughs> I love that that stuck, by the way, the post-apocalyptic. I mean, it was fun music. Yeah. And the way I met you is that people love this story, but I hold on to this. Kid Rock's drummer, Kiss's drummer, and Bruce Springsteen's drummer 
got their gigs by answering ads in the back of the local music rag. So here I go. I'm answering ads. An ad in the back of the Nashville scene. It was like, drummer wanted, must have own drums and reliable transportation or something. Anyways, I go out to this creepy house off of Brick Church Pike. Oh, you're, I don't remember. There's a set of drums. There's no throne. There's a tree stump. (laughs) So you guys told me to learn like five songs or something. I go out there and it's, we totally hit it off. Next thing you know, we're in this cool rock band. Yeah. And we're hanging out and playing music together and you were on your first marriage <laughs> you're keeping track i was between yeah. marriages oh yeah that's a lot right. of the guys in the band were married yeah that that's two out right. of four <laughs> two out of the four or five guys were married yeah i think yeah um no longer no i know but that that was a good divorce for you it was. Yeah. I had a great divorce, Rich. I Thanks had a great. I had a great divorce. That out, yeah. I had a great divorce too, <laughs> if you recall. Uh, so, but then we had the opportunity to move as a band to sunny Los Angeles because you guys had some opportunities out there. Yes. And at the same time, I was playing with a group called Rushlow that had got signed to Lyric Street Records, and we were putting out some very over polished country pop music. Yes. And I. Ah, sometimes I think like, what what would have happened if I had moved to Los Angeles? But everything works out. Now you move back here. How I'm many years here. ago? Uh, it's about fifteen, I think, something like that. When? You uh, been? No, fi- oh no, I I got back here about in 2015. two thousand fifteen. Oh, two years ago. Two years right. ago. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so you're doing. You did like sixteen years in in L A. And yeah, now you're back like here that. for two years. It's like, and we never skipped a beat. It was like we're still having birthday parties at the Red Door. <laughs> yeah. And yes doing the whole thing but so much happened for you out there you ended up becoming not just a a, you know a a gutter rock musician a knuckle dragging rock musician from Dayton Ohio you became a TV and film composer how did that happen well uh, through a through a sort of series of failures in in my career (laughs) really uh, everything that I succeeded at was a direct correlation to some Failure, but that's what that success preceded. is, right? Failing up. Yeah, that's what happened for me. Yeah. Um, front row for the meltdown in in L.A. Never found an audience, but what did happen was all of the music supervisors loved us, right. and they started placing our music in television. And then eventually, someone asked me to write a jingle for Comcast Digital Cable. Nice, that's what it was, and uh, we wrote it. They bought it. They sent me a check, and even though we were quote unquote signed at the time, uh, that was the first money I, I had ever gotten from you know yeah. first serious money I yeah. ever gotten. Because I remember when when you guys took the band out west, then Derek O'Brien, the original drummer from Social Distortion, became your drummer. Yes, good old Derek, and he produced or co-produced that first record that we recorded in Glendale, California. That's right. Yeah, and now I'm putting two and two together. Lucinda Williams, who I'm a massive fan of, is a massive fan of you and your music. And I remember that that connection probably came because Derek's girlfriend was good friends with Lucinda, right? In fact, I met Lou at Derek's house at a barbecue. I met Lou and my future wife the same night at the same barbecue. And uh, Asia yeah. Asia was Lucinda's uh, photographer at the time. I yeah. didn't know that, or maybe yeah. I did and forgot. <laughs> Anyways, Lou suggested that Asia, my future wife, and yes. I come down to see her show together. So she put us on the, the list. Uh, I love her music. Set us up on our first date, so That's to speak. great. Oh, yeah. my God. And then um, Asia went on to do like show running or like for PA work she's, in uh, the film industry. Well, yeah, she's a writer. She's a writer. She's extraordinary in yeah. her own way. Yeah. She and you guys so are many. both very, very hyper intelligent people. Yeah. Well, we're hyper. No. Now you're hyper intelligent. Oh, you yeah. cope together. And I think we you guys are together. cute. Yeah, we are cute. We're adorable. <laughs> You stopped it cute, but I would have went further. Adorbs. Adorbs. Totally adorbs. That's the thing, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then was there, there was a period where you're like, oh my God, maybe I can go down this path. And did you flirt with the composition program at UCLA or? Yeah. Well, first of all, I went, I just took a bunch of theory at a, at a local college where um, a lot of the the professors moonlighted at UCLA. Oh, where was that? uh, 
Pasadena. S- Pasadena City College? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they had a great music program. So I, I j- basically just took every music class they had for a couple years, three or four years. And then I went to the film scoring program at um, UCLA for a while. Right. Until I couldn't afford it anymore. Basically, I was writing jingles to put myself through music college at the time. Right. And eventually, it, it got to the point where, like, I'm working all the time. You're already in the yeah. industry that you want to be successful in. Yeah. So, I don't have a degree, but I have a hell of a lot of credits. Right. <laughs> so, so you got the first gig is Comcast. Yeah. Then what happens? Well, I'll tell you. The, the thing about that industry is um, getting your first gig is relatively easy because you're an unknown uh, entity at we'll get this point. guy for cheap yeah yeah getting the second gig is almost impossible <laughs> uh, because all of a sudden they've seen what you do that's what he does that's all he can do you know we'll call you when we need a, that exact same thing again which could be a year could be two years it could be never right you know? so i realized that i had to learn music formally to, so i had a right. broad palette you know so I went and I'm a classically trained punk rocker now. So, you know, I, I got my classical training. I went, you know, I studied with a jazz guy for a year to, and just so I could, I was a well-rounded musician at that right. point, you know. You, I were was, pro- you were a professional student. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I knew, I like uh, like nobody else in my classes, uh, I knew exactly why I was there. <laughs> you know? Oh, so there was a lot of people say that were like, 18 or 19 that parents said, yeah, we'll send you there. You guys can figure, you can figure it out along the way. Yeah. And I was, I was 30. I was the creepy old guy in class, you know? (laughs) And, uh, and so I was the one uh, sitting up front, raising my hand a lot. Yeah. You were the (laughs) non-trad. Exactly. You know, what's really creepy is when I do these speeches for high schools and you look at these young girls and you're like, wow, you look so young. Why? Because you are. (laughs) But they just, they just, I mean, and then college girls are, I'm like. Remember when they seem so old? College chicks? Remember like, you know, I used to look at my brother's yearbooks and think, my gosh, they look so old. And they're women. (laughs) And they were yeah, like, you know, they, 11th grade. I know. <laughs> and back when I was in fourth and I was like. So oh. creepy. <laughs> so creepy. Well, this conversation sounds creepy. It, it really yeah, got it creepy. Yeah. Um, so, you, so you're getting all the training you need, yeah. which really speaks to the power of music education. And I can't go through one episode of the show without thanking our sponsors, the School of Rock. Yeah. Angie and Kelly McCright, they sponsor our show. They've had the School of Rock here in two locations in Nashville for a decade. They're the best. They have an incredible program. Parents, you get your kids in that school. There's two locations, Nashville and Franklin. If you're interested, the email address is what, Jim? It is Franklin at school. Schoolofrock.com and Nashville at schoolofrock.com. Uh, I don't know why I went into puker <laughs> mode at that point. You did. You went into the, 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 the when we, were, <laughs> we did that show where I just, yeah. Old school. Radio puker. Yeah, totally. Uh, so so these kids are going to learn, they're going to learn people skills, how to function in a team, how to take direction. And then along the way, they might learn how to play drums, keyboards, bass, front to band, sing. It's going to be awesome. How to be, how to not be that person. On the bus. On a tour bus. That's right. They learn those life skills. So even if they don't become professional musicians, they're going to walk a foot taller. They're going to be more confident and more cultured. Does it make a difference when you kind of roll your shoulders back and adjust your posture? Does it make you more confident? Sure. We all hunch over these things. Oh, these are really bad. I've noticed that my posture is pretty horrific. Yeah? Yeah, they've got these products on Facebook that are like... I think it shocks you when you start to shump. Slump. Oh, it's right? like Pavlov's dog or something. You never took like Alexander class in music school. The Alexander? No, I yeah. never did the Alexander technique. Yeah, where you so. mount you. It's where you master or make the most of the least movements possible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And all I remember is it was getting up and out of chairs a lot for some reason. Yeah, it's like church. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was sit, standing up and sitting down a lot. It's like stand, yeah. sit, stand, sit. <laughs> it's so easy to forget how not to keep your back up and down. You, you look know? really good like that, buddy. Zipper, nice. There it Showcases is. Are, are, are you doing? Are you doing the, uh, so uh, is that new? <laughs> is you that like a, it? Is that a new zipper thing? It is. You got two zipper things? Yeah. That's great. That's, yeah. His, that's his way of saying, yeah, it doesn't look good on You got the slip on? You got your slip on today? I do. Here. <clears throat> Costco. Costco shoes. Yeah, that's right. Jeremy would never be caught dead in those. Maybe would you? Dead. <laughs> would I don't you? know. <laughs> I mean, are these stylish? Enough? I mean, maybe in his I'd coffin. Say yes. I said go with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's uh, it was $29 at Costco when they're comfortable. I love it, buddy. And I'm a dad. Yeah, you that's are. My excuse. I support it. 
Yeah. I'm very stylish, believe it or not. Yeah, I believe it. Now, remember when you were living over in uh, Silver Lake and I came to visit you? I do. And yeah. I had my first experience with intelligentsia. And it was it was hilarious because I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I, you and I were in this deep conversation, and, and the waiter walked by, and I asked for a refill, and they <laughs> I could have it looked like I had three heads. He looked at me like we don't do that. You son of a bitch! Yeah. <laughs> did you just ask for a refill? I did that. We went to a Mexican restaurant the other night yeah. in Murfreesboro, and the woman came up to us, and I she had broken English. I didn't understand what she was saying, and she was like, "You want cheese dip?" I'm like. Yeah, yeah, we'll do cheese dip. She's a small la. Um, yeah, and my kids are just sitting there looking at me like, "Dad, I'm going." I, I don't know what she's saying. And, and then, then, and I look at her, I go, I, "I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you're saying." And she literally looks right back at me, lingers, and then walks away. And I'm going, "Oh, damn!" And Craig Cammy goes. She burned holes through your head just now. She was just, I was like, oh. I don't know what you're saying. Well, at least you were honest. I, I yeah, I just didn't, I didn't understand. And just I just confidently agree when something like that comes up. Yes. That's right. Yes. Did you pick Absolutely. up a little Spanish in Los Angeles? A little, yeah. Poquito. No. <clears throat> I wish I could, I wish I could like, <laughs> you know, like put sentences together. Yeah. I, I have basically restaurant Spanish. Yeah. Where's the bathroom? Yeah. Baño. Baños. Yeah. Yeah. See? So, yeah. Si. Yeah. See, hey, we went to go get those nice tacos out there in Donaldson. What was that joint you and I went? It was like we went on Taco Tuesday. It was a there was nectar, a nectar taco. Yeah, Bell. it's good. Yeah, yeah, if you're if you're in Nashville, yeah. there's a little taco joint, and they make beautiful coffees and smoothies and stuff. But at night, it turns into like a taco and tequila joint. You know, it makes me think of like the waiter story you guys just told. You ever say a, an inappropriate response to a salutation, mm. like "Hey, how you doing?" Oh, not much. Oh, because you aren't listening and not right. engaged. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. front row for the meltdown had a song called "Salutations from the Gutter." Oh, right. Yeah. Now, now, do you want to have the audience hear a little bit of this music that we created in two thousand one? Yeah. Should we go "I Bleed" to or Omega song? Omega song. I'm an open book, Rich. Just do your worst. <laughs> bad religion fan so i like this stuff <laughs> all right yeah cool. dude that takes me down memory lane man it and it does. was such a welcome thing to do at the time because it was it was so raw and i was training myself to like lock down these tempos like 68 bpm to play a country ballad right and you guys were just like covered in tattoos and you're just like kick <laughs> it off let's go <laughs> and we were you know we were drinking a bit oh yes yes god yes i have never seen a group of people drink more canned beer i i was like i wasn't into canned beer and like i still don't drink even more beer. than courtney and i drank when we went to miami <laughs> were you guys drinking canned beer we put a lot away that night yeah that was bottled beer maybe. yeah well, i mean that's why i still respect you thank you it's good <laughs> just, no, you, were, you, you were looking you guys were on a budget yeah yeah, well, we were a rock band in Nashville. I don't know if you remember this. That but was it. Was nobody cared about rock bands in Nashville back then? <laughs> At that time, no one cared. No, you're right, and especially people in Nashville. <laughs> where did we play around here? Uh, we played where? the end. The I remember. end. Yeah, cash only. Yeah, beer only. That cash was, only. Where, 
we played a few places yeah. around here. We yeah. went over equally well in all the venues. But I really enjoyed that. First, that was like one of my first trips out to California in Glendale. And I was like, wait a minute, the weather is like this every day? And then every time we would break for lunch, she was like, well, what are we doing today? The Ethiopian restaurant, the Thai restaurant, or the right. Indian restaurant? I'm like, right. what? In the same strip mall? <laughs> right. This is incredible. Yeah. And then you guys, I think, got the bug and were just like, we are not leaving. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. That was that was where I was at. Yeah. As you pointed out, marriage number one was dissolving. Yes. And this place seems nice. The weather's nice. Yeah, it was it was really good for you. Yeah. And now, now you sent me a lot of uh, things that kind of like showcase the different sides of Jeremy. Um, I'm trying to think. You guys just heard this kind of like gutter rock band. And the I'm next thing. played that. I haven't yeah. heard that. I don't have a copy of that record. I haven't the, heard that in years. I, I, and then you did a solo kind of record thing, too, that never saw the light of day. Did I? We made a lot of music <laughs> that, um, that didn't really see the light of day. Did yeah. we mention the most notable piece of music he's made ever so far? Oh, my God. Yeah. You want to hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jeremy was nice it, enough to the, write the theme song to the Rich Redmond show. It's, it's basically the feather in his cap, yeah. pinnacle of his career creation. I now, called my mom and told her about it. He goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, man, I'll knock this out for you this afternoon. I said, I said, can we do something that's kind of like, you know, tip of the hat to like the Tonight Show, maybe meets Conan. So he goes like, yeah, horns. We got some horns. We got the upright bass. Yeah, I said, yeah. And, I, and then, then send me the files. And then I put the drums on, on over at the drum channel mm -hmm. in Oxnard home of the world's largest strawberries so our uh our theme song is that live from music city nashville <laughs> People are familiar with it that <laughs> listen to this show. Yeah, but they're just used to hiring a bunch of talking on top of it. Yeah, by some bonehead with a bad voice. <laughs> Thank Ooh. you so much for doing that, man. That oh, was, yeah. I mean, that's just, of course. you probably just knocked that out, man. Yeah, it was fun. Well, I didn't have to do much in that because really the, the, the idea was to create space for you. Space to for the drums to Gene crew put up. Yeah, you want to. I think your one note was toms. You those, wanted toms. Those toms so. sound good too. Nice <laughs> DW <laughs> kit there. Yeah. Big toms. Yeah. And our friend, uh, did you ever work with John Paterno? He mixed that. No, I. Well, I don't think I have anyway. Yeah, so. John Paterno, nice guy. He was thinking about moving to Nashville himself. Everyone's coming here, guys. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, is we're already recording. You were nice enough to ask me to play on some new. New music that's, that's kind right. of reggae inspired. Yeah. What have you guys done since we tracked drums on that stuff? Well, uh, Paul Eversole, who's producing it, uh, has basically kind of gone through and made a lot of decisions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I'm tired of producing myself. So, so you like somebody to come in and say, like, look at. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you I've, need that third party perspective. I've produced myself before and I hate it. So uh, it's nice for someone else to just come in and say, drop this verse. The yeah. song is too long and things like that, you know. Because, yeah. Um, so that was over at his studio. Yeah. A nice place. Uh, for go those of you guys that don't know Paul, he produced Brad Arnold's band. He produced Three Doors Down. Remember we were right talking on. about how Brad took out those cool drum takes? Mm -hmm. And then he also did Sister Hazel, right? Yeah, right and yeah. Saliva, a lot of rock bands. Yeah, a lot of gospel i think just a great guy I think that's what his grammy is for super talented yeah, yeah super talented guy so we're having a good time doing that so i think the next thing would be this is the song that started me down the reggae path rich it's a song it's a song called sun up wake up so you started this kind of like come came out of nowhere reggae career <laughs> yeah well i i did what so many people in la do which is i lied about my credentials but um <laughs> uh J.J. Abrams' company. I, I, Bad Robot? Yeah. We had worked together quite a bit. And um, there was a show in production. And I knew, I was really tight with the uh, uh, showrunner, they call him, J.H. Uh, Wyman. And J.H. Uh, and Charles, the head of the music department at Bad Robot, decided they wanted a reggae song. But they didn't 
um, know who to turn to. So they, <laughs> they called me since we had worked together a lot and said, hey, do you have anything like this like we want this yeah. and i said yes which was a lie and you just made it happen and i i said uh you just give me a couple hours to find it so i wrote it and i sent it to them and they used it on the show and what the weird thing that happened was i ended up with actual reggae fans from around the globe i love um, that's the power <laughs> of the internet right yeah so i started writing more because i i truthfully really enjoyed it and and uh it was something i've never you know been able to do before i've never had a reason um, cause I'm a punk rock kid from Ohio. I never got the reggae bug, uh, up until then. Anyways, I did it and I just completely fell in love with the process. Yeah. So yeah, that song was, uh, the sort of, and then you kind of called me up and said, Hey, I want to like play around Nashville. Let's do some live shows. And then we called up our, who do we have in the room that day? We had uh, Mike from smash mouth. Yeah. We had TJ, right? Or, we had, uh, TJ. Yeah. TJ. And, uh, um, and Mike. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we we do, and we we said this can work. Yeah, it sounded great. Next thing you know, yeah. we were in the studio, and then you called uh, Tim Lafave. <laughs> Lafave, yeah, Lafave. I know. Yeah. I think it's really funny. It's almost like Brett Favre. <laughs> yeah. Favre. Yeah. No. Yeah. What a what a wonderful guy. And what an amazing talent. Yeah, Yeesh. Tim. I every time I've been able to do a gig with Tim, I come away going, "Oh my god, the bass! Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah. yeah, lead bass, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's so really, it was a really really enjoyable experience. But check this out. That makes me want to... That's like a heavy on a three, isn't it? Yeah. That's what they call the one drop. That's their backbeat. That's the three. one drop. Yeah. Three. Two. Everything just floats around that. It's almost like the center of gravity. And you could just flirt around that between yeah. the vocal yeah. and the skank guitar. It's like a, it's all, it's a jazz technique kind of. Like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. <clears throat> making three sound like one. Yeah, the the yeah. the cats that invented that um, whole genre were geniuses. I mean, I, then you still got the, Sly like, and Robbie down there yeah, just yeah. crushing it. The deeper I got into that genre, the just the more I fell in love with like they were fucking geniuses. You yes, know what I, mean? Like, I mean, and that makes me just want to like smoke the earth, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Just yeah. get on the couch, man. Why don't we make a sweeper? Let's just what? Let's listen to reggae and then just binge all the Cheech and Chong movies about, about the it. sky. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get the Funyuns and Doritos. <laughs> I'll get the Mountain Dews. Never watch porn with Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so <laughs> we uh, we got ahead of things. How do you start working for J.J. Uh, Abrams' company? Okay, it's kind of a convoluted story, but um, I mean, he seems like a is he a nice guy, swell guy. Yeah, yeah, Just hyper creative and. Built yeah. an empire. He's an impressive person. How I'll do say you, that. How do you build an empire like that in Hollywood? That's insane. <clears throat> well, I, you got to be good in the room, if you know what I mean. Like uh, pitching. W when you know, like, I'll put it. When JJ enters a room, you know it because everything gets a little quiet. Uh, all the heads turn. <laughs> he just commands a room. But like he's and, always done, commanded a room. Yeah, he just has that kind of gravity to him. Wow. Anyway. Um. I got to keep working on that. How did I get cut, hooked up? Asia, my yes. aforementioned wife, uh, she was working on a show called Fringe. 
uh, at the time. Right. And she invited the staff of Fringe to come down and watch me play an acoustic set at the Cinema Bar. Do you remember that place? Yes, I saw you there. Um, Loved it. They really liked a track, uh, a song I played. I did. I did. I was doing a cover of um, "If I Only Had a Brain" at the time. Oh yeah. They really liked it. Asked me to record it, so I recorded it on my uh, laptop at home. Sent it to them. They dug it, and they ended up writing a scene around my version of that song wow. for Fringe, and that kind of just kind of made it up the ladder at um, Bad Robot, and eventually they brought me in to start kind of collaborating with Charles uh, Scott, who's the um, hi Charles, <laughs> who's the uh, the main music man. Uh, at Bad Robot to start bringing me in to collaborate on writing, things like that. So that's it. Yeah. Really. The rest was history. So that was a that was a relationship uh, that was fruitful. And then along the way, there's Jingle Punks. There's Jingle Punks. I had, um, in, in one of the iterations of Front Row for the Meltdown, where um, Derek was playing drums at this point. What's up, Derek? <laughs> Yo! And we were... Uh, Santa Fe Springs! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were making a lot of music at the time yeah. um, and really trying to find our sound. I, I don't know if I told you this, but we had a pretty gritty sound here in Nashville. And then it got... When I went to... And, and in Nashville, I felt like we are on the cutting edge, man. We are so far ahead. And in Nashville, we kind of were. But right. when I got to LA, uh, I realized that we were at least five years behind the curve. As there, far as... You know, so... But no, it was like a great grungy rock band. It was. Yeah. Uh, but... That was, that was long gone. So things got point. slicker when you got to LA. Yeah, so we were kind of searching for a sound. Anyways, I had written a bunch of music that, for whatever reason, the band passed on, you know, because I was sort of feeling around for directions. Anyways, I had a sort of Strokes-ish kind of song that I sent to Jingle Punks. They were this brand new company, and they were looking for um, material because they just didn't have it. So I sent them a song that the band passed on, and I recorded on my own anyways. Um, and uh, they used it and they just ran with it because they didn't have a lot in their library at the time. And they, maybe that year, placed it 150 times, right. you know. So it got in like television shows, commercials. It just got everywhere. Cause, right. um, so anyways, then they started having me write freelance for them. And uh, eventually I became a, you know, staffed composer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're getting a, getting a check. Yeah. Every two weeks. Yeah. It was That's nice. nice when they take out the Fika Fika, Socha, Meta, all that. Yeah. Healthcare. All it's that all stuff. Yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, for the folks that aren't in the industry, um, how does a company like Jingle Punks work? How does that work? They're placing songs in. Yes. Um, so I guess in broad terms, you would call it a music library. Yes. Uh, a library and a music library is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a it's just a whole bunch of music and, uh, you know, categorized into whatever it is, hip hop, rock, country or whatever, yeah. so that a client can go through it, find the right thing for their television show. Um, and, and yeah, in, in its simplest form, that's it. Now, Jingle Punks differed a little bit in that they started writing music specifically for programs that came to them, you know, so that's why they brought me on is to write um, specifically for shows like they they did all the music for um, The Voice so we were always so every season we were writing all the Ooh, voice music and, Tension Beds yes yes and and also for The Voice it's a lot of victory beds you know it's like <laughs> you won hooray you know, or like, oh, you're to the next round I've never seen the show but something like that you know um, I love that you wrote for it you've never seen it that's incredible yeah it's a game show right <laughs> now what was the thing with speaking of game shows with you on the gong show with mike myers were you yeah. an actor on that well yeah i was paid as an actor yeah that's an awesome uh, well yeah what happened there that was also through jingle punks is uh jingle jared jared goodstadt the guy who started the company uh he one of his good buddies is david arquette david arquette is somehow connected with the show uh, I think as a producer on some level, but they, they asked him, Hey, do you want to come on and sing a song? Well, of course he did. And when they, when they called up jingle punks, I was the only one old enough to know what the hell the gong show was. So yeah. anybody want to be on the gong show? And of course I, I do. Yeah. Of course I do. Yeah. So yeah, I, I went on there and I played banjo while um, we had some marionettes dance around and we did a song about vegetables and it didn't get picked up. 
Oh no! Or it, did it? it? Yeah, yeah. It went. A it ran se- a yeah. couple seasons. Yeah. Did you get gonged? No, we didn't get gonged <clears> uh, <throat> because we weren't actually competing. We were just. <laughs> I don't know why we. Were so there, the original so fun. the yeah. original host for that was Chuck Barris, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah the and, legendary Chuck. And Barris. And there was a documentary that I think Clooney's people did about his life. A couple well, of years a biopic, back. Yeah, a biopic. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't he uh, like always? Like hammered on a show. Is yeah, that Paris? Probably, yeah, yeah. It seemed like he was. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Well, I've been a gong show. He'd also, always wear that hat. Yeah, he also mm-hmm. claimed to be a CIA operative who had killed thirty six people. That's right. But yeah. see, you know, he just believed his lies. Yeah. I mean, who knows? It could have actually been. So, so you're going to write you you write a lot of tension beds because we you know we had yeah. Mike Elsner on the show early episode. We're talking, you know, he's like oh, knows all about the metadata to org so you people can find your material quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. And he goes, dude, I wrote so many tension beds, and you just wrote in your email to me. You wrote. Um, this is what is known as the tension cue. As a television writer, you compose so many of these that you want to pull your hair out and quit music entirely. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I mean, as an a example? composer, I I I compose maybe six to eight hundred pieces a year. Three hundred of which are this, basically. You know? Your your dialogue goes so well over it right now. Yes, it does. That's right. Yeah, I've noticed that when we're talking. The music can be a little lower, so this is good. Or this is just self-awareness of listening to ourselves. I feel kind of anxious right now. No, it's good. <laughs> I feel like it's at a good level. Jim might have to run to the bathroom. Yeah. Does he? Is this Maybe the not. prom dress that Becky wants? I don't know. Let's flash back to the different scenes of people looking at the camera going... <laughs> and then the other cam... Ooh. Did you ever watch Face Off on the Sci-Fi Channel? Huh? It's like where people... What is it? They, <laughs> what is it about? They had to create the the best monster movie makeup. And no. <laughs> oh, I want to press one. Hey, what, hey, what's this one? Yeah, we should you should make some like you know voice beds that include things like this. <laughs> I sound do, effects. I do get asked for comedy bed occasionally. Yeah, comedy Michael? beds, and yeah. that's like a what, it, what would be good for comedy music, like King of Queens, like cash registers opening and closing, and horns, and you know what? You know what? It's in there a lot of snaps, a lot of snaps, and then some kind of bum, 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 bum. well, Seinfeld of, ruins it for everyone. Yeah, so there's a lot of bass stuff. You there's, can bring back the yeah, a lot of that. <laughs> And also in a comedy bed, there's stops. You know, there's a lot of stops in the track so that there can be something funny. Hooray! Oh, you know, there's the beat. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know what I always worried about, uh, wondered about with uh, television, uh, TV and film composers is they're sending you the files of the show to compose to. <clears throat> there's got to be tons of NDAs and, and agreements where... Well, it depends on what kind of show you're working on. Uh, a scripted show, yes, you're probably composing to a picture. And yes, there will be paperwork. stacks of paperwork leading up to that. Uh, if, you, if you're working on reality shows, which is really 90, let's face it, 90% of content at this point, uh, you're, you're composing without a picture and they're going to edit to your um, yeah. track you know, based on that. So wow. it's kind of backwards uh, compared to what you would think. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so they send you the, so say they send you the file, right? Let's say that. And uh, you're done composing to it. Mm-hmm. What, what what happens? You, you you throw away their original file, or is it a virtual file where you don't actually download it? It's just like a link to a site that they house. Oh, no, you download it okay. uh, because you, you drop it in your session so that you can time up to it yeah. exactly. You know. How do you distribute your stuff? Like, do you make it for public consumption? Uh, you mean my music? Yeah. Actually, I don't know. It's probably on Spotify or something. Well, I mean, it's uh, like through... Um, Bandcamp, maybe? Oh, um, like... Uh, Artlist. TuneCore or something? Like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. I think I use TuneCore. I use Artlist. I don't know what that is. Stuff. Never heard of that. I just downloaded a thing called Singularity, and it's all like tension stuff, like echoey piano notes, like... Bang! Oh, right, yeah. It's it's like a like a sample library. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's 400 of it. I, I looked into it. I, I come across them every now and then. I'm like, oh, let me take a look at it. I listen to it and I'm going, that's a pretty good. That's not mm-hmm. bad. How, what, how much does it cost? 40 bucks? Done. Yeah. It was 40 bucks. 400 sounds. And what do you use them for? For your podcast? Yeah, videos, you yeah. know. Gotcha. I used I use the, like uh, risers and- You need my drum samples. Do you, I, I, you need a copy of those. 
Oh, you sent them to me. I got. I get a download. Oh, see, I was already done my due diligence. <laughs> um, so there's a, like anything can come at you at any day, and you say yes to everything. So yes. here's a track called "Memory" in 16 millimeter, and it's a freaking bossa nova. Yeah. And when I think of you, I'm not like, oh yeah, he's you know he grew up in Brazil, um, but you got to get it done. My voice teacher was Brazilian though, so there you go. <laughs> Virtual bass. Yes. That gets my loins moving. Why don't you come in for some fine champagne? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. Why did the uh, cat cross the road? What? He wanted to get some uh, more uh, meow mix. <laughs> That's horrible. So that's pretty much all virtual instruments, <laughs> it's right? Kind of like that. It kind of bed you do the. Uh, yeah, well, I programmed those drums and I played a bass line on uh, samples and then uh, just played guitar over it, you know, because I'm a guitar player. It's like a two hours work for you. Yeah, about. Hey, uh, what do you say we go out and get some pizza and after that do a little fucking? <laughs> What's the matter? You don't like pizza? It's horrible. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I didn't know you guys work so blue. <laughs> Every please, occasionally, he comes please, out. <laughs> please fade. I think I got one more in me. Hold on. Let's see where this goes. You better wrap it up quick. I hear the tag coming. Oh, shit. Ooh. Sorry. Oh. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I got gonged. I got gonged. So, are those uh, star pants you're wearing? Because your ass is out of this world. <laughs> That's horrible. Hey, you can do a ton, like a ton of pickup lines over that. I know, but... Uh, play, play it again. Let's pull up some pickup lines. We'll read them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yes. As a, as a composer, or as any, you know, as any musician, you, especially when you're trying to get started, you say yes to absolutely Ev anything. Everything. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. if they ask you to conduct an orchestra, you say yes, and you just figure out how to do it. Anyway, so that, when I get something like that, you know, when, when like, especially if it's a genre I'm not completely familiar with... For that, I, I programmed a beat, but to do that, I had to just watch some drum lessons on YouTube for a while, you know, so, so that I, I took a couple drum lessons before I could... The, the, the bossa nova? Yeah, so I could do the bossa nova beat, you know. You know, so, and, and that's just a part where training, being a real musician helps. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like, young punk rock Jeremy couldn't have done that, but, uh, you know... That's having, really good stuff. I like having and gone. I just, I love, I, I love the, the uh, evolution. I mean, I really, really do. That, you know, that Jim, song reminds me of uh, the um, Trollo Lo guy. You know what I'm talking about? Trollo Lo. Yeah. Lo, 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 you ever seen that video, the Trollo uh, Low guy? I, I, I maybe. don't know the Trollo Low guy. Dude, you got to pull that up on YouTube. It's hilarious. We'll do that after. That's right. After the break. <laughs> coming up after the break, the Trollo Low guy will kick things off in another 40-minute long set. Sorry. I'm <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We're going to be right back. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Well, our big tagline has been inspiring kids to rock on stage and in life. We changed it actually to inspiring the world to rock on stage and in life because when kids are here, they learn so much more than music. They learn how to be on a team. They learn responsibility. They learn to take responsibility for their actions. They learn to organize their time. And we try to teach them, you know, not to be that person that nobody wants to be on a tour bus with. <laughs> Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. And I just discovered that Jeremy has an awesome website. It's called jeremylittlemusic.com. On the site, you could see a bunch of cool photos, probably from... Oh, look at We made it the, the last recording session. Oh, hey. For your new music. And there there's some are. There's some nice pictures of... Uh, Fa and ramen right. and some early early days this looks like pre me and dayton yeah, yeah that was look at this little guy that's cute <laughs> that really is cute and then your flower bed yeah my flowers and then some I care deeply about some them. cool uh some cool examples of all your music and this is your latest single called beggar's song <laughs> i swear i pushed the button yeah <laughs> Of what was before 
very, you, you probably appreciate this very police esque. Totally. Yeah. You kidding me? I'll be something out your window. How do you stop this track on this beautiful picture here? I pot it down. Fame. Oh, yeah. I'm curious about these uh, jingles you have up here. Yeah. The cute footlocker girl. Yeah, um, that was a track Who's my, she? my buddy Miles did, and I sang over it. Did she sing? <laughs> <laughs> Does she, uh, we could put that music on. You could take that coach's uh, uniform off and leave her right over there if you want. This guy, it's, I don't even know why I keep him around. It's, it's, it's so entertaining. Oh my gosh. It's nuts. You no, guys. It really is. No, but I love that. Now, who is that? That was Mike Duffy on drums? That was Michael Duffy on drums. Didn't, didn't yeah. Blair Santa play some stuff for you? Or yeah. was just, he just did that gig with you? Yeah, Blair did a gig with me. Blair and I have a, a prog rock thing that we're doing together. What is that called? Really? It doesn't have a name yet. Uh, we're just right. We're just kind of sending tracks back and forth. And That's uh, great. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Wow. It's sort of Massive Attack meets early genesis kind yeah of stuff. so blair is our buddy we kind of i went to school with blair mm -hmm. and um he ended up moving right out to la and then these guys connected and we're now we're writing music together i got a name for you right nightmare arena <laughs> it's the opposite of dream theater Ooh. oh gotcha sorry yeah i think we're gonna call our song like ourselves comedy coronet it sounds <laughs> Because let's do this again. Liquid Circus. <laughs> that is, you get a lot, of, we got a lot of mileage out of that one. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. That's the same one that's on the um, the comedy channel on Sirius XM. That same guy. They're probably using this exact same board. Probably. That's right. So what is, what's the next five years look for? Like for you, buddy? I don't know. Rich. Are you just, I mean, you people, got like, do you, do you plan your life like that? Or is it just like you're taking, the work is coming all the time for you. Yes. I great. haven't had a day off in so long, Rich. Uh, that, though, I mean, the work comes in from LA, but now you're good to enjoy Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I get to be in Nashville. I love it here. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the next five years, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm, I'm still, you know, writing stuff as an artist. Um, uh, my good buddy Jared Goodstadt, who started Jingle Punks, has a new company called Audio <clears throat> Up, and uh, we're going to reinvent the podcast as it as it. Really? Yes. What's the idea there? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about oh, it, gotcha, but uh, gotcha. But uh, so high production value. High production value. We are collaborating on a rock musical in podcast form. Oh my right God, now. that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's gonna be yeah, a good you were time. telling me you were going to do a rock musical, yeah. but I thought that would may have been with Derek. Or a oh right, one. yeah. He ha he has a rock opera. A rock opera. Uh, I they asked me to be in it, but I I, uh, I passed. So you guys are going to do a rock musical in a podcast form. Yeah, serialized over several episodes. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's so noisy out there with the podcast. There's a million podcasts. There really are. Ninety percent of which are people recording in their basement and just sharing the episodes with their friends. Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> can, can you hear me can, i can hear you can you hear me is that like the average production value yeah yeah it's yeah. not good that's what clouds up the market are you are you on can you hear me because i can hear you what, what's the weather like there oh it's nice oh that's good oh yeah you mean with the uh the, when they do interviews over like oh, zoom so amateur hour i like being i like being in the room at the same time so you know what time it is you I know wish we had a press roll on here you know what's in the next of five years for him is a jingle for the random question of the show. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I might yeah. hire you to do random this. Random question. I didn't random know about question. This. Random question of the show. Good uh -huh. at There we go. And yeah. it's got to be kind of vaudevillian and fit in with the theme. That's right. Absolutely. With some uh, D note heavy crunch guitar. No. It's the random question. Random question. Random question of the day. Why do you always quash my creative there's spirit? No, there's no girls at those shows, but <laughs> at least with swing music, they might swing dance. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. right, the five beats that get you late. That's right. <laughs> the five beats that'll get you late are not... Dude, <laughs> not the money beats, the money shot beats. Ouch. That's good. <laughs> good God, guys. We, the last time, the last show we had, we talked about, you know, uh, what was it? We're digging into funnels and selling yeah, and sure. that stuff. That's a long sample. It really is. I'll share it off. So... Random question. Random question. Oh, this is a real random. thing. All right. I we want a jingle question. for it, man. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I got to find a question. So, you guys keep on talking. 
I'm nope. excited. I, I liked a couple of them. Nice. All right, random question. Here we go. Would you rather have? To <laughs> okay, I'm reading this I'm for the first time. I'm glad you asked. Would you rather have to fart loudly every time you have a serious conversation, or have to burp after every kiss? Ooh, that's a great question. I'm glad you. you asked. <laughs> I was. Where's the tension bed? I was just talking about this. Uh, I'm finding it. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go with burp on this one. Ooh, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, hold on, Let's hold on. You know Would what? you rather yeah. have to fart loudly every time, or have a serious conversation, or have to burp after every kiss? We need a camera too right now. Shit. You know, okay. Um, I'm glad you asked. And we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it! No! <laughs> I'm going to go with burp here, and I'll tell you why. Is that your final answer? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Let me call someone. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, farting is so invasive. You know what I mean? What if it's silent but deadly? It's even worse. And it's like you can pass it off, even though you might feel the heat from it. Uh, you know, and you're just kind of like, I... It's just like You mean blame it on the dog kind of thing. You know? you know, it's kind of crop dust. It's just embarrassing. That's right. Farting is embarrassing. And, and it just kind of it lingers, man. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, have? sometimes at 30,000 feet on the plane, you can get away with it. You know what I mean? I've no. been guilty of that. <laughs> just <let him> <laughs> <be>. <laughs> Guys, I'm really glad I came here to talk about this. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I decided yeah. that with my current relationship that there is never going to ever be any farting. Oh, really? dude. Once you put the ring on it, that's when, that's when it goes to that level. No, we're going to start like, you it's know, a continual courtship. Good luck to you. When she starts Good coming luck. into the bathroom yeah. when you're going, when you're pooping, that's a whole nother level. Hey, I need to talk to you about something. Oh, okay. No, I'm, no, no. I'm we, a captive we, we audience. realize that the door is closed and that is personal time. Oh, uh, that's yeah. Okay. There has to be some mystery, man. Yeah, you gotta keep the mystery. Yeah. You gotta leave something to the imagination. <laughs> it's it's like that scene in This Is Forty where Paul Red's got his legs all splayed out and he asks uh, his wife to come and look and she, and she's like, "Can we just keep some mystery?" <laughs> she's like, "Yes, you have an anal fissure. Yes, but sometimes you know that's what the partner's for." I guess. You know, sometimes can you hey you, you look at the uh, undercarriage and see if I got a fissure. Who's underwriting this segment, by the way? That's kind of what I know. School of Rock is not going to like this segment. Of the, of the show. Actually, they are very fun people and with a great sense of humor. Um, so was there any other things you want to kind of like let the world know that exists here? JeremyLittleMusic.com. You are in Nashville. You are in business. All these years of experience. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad that you're I'm so proud of you. Rich. You're right down the street <laughs> yeah. and that we're making new music together. Yeah, it's great. I have nothing else to add. I don't know. I didn't even know if we would have anything to talk about. Really. We always have something to talk yeah. about. We talked about um, the the audition on, and the tree stump, right. and then we talked about yeah. Glendale, and then we talked about Lucinda, then we talked about your bride, then we talked about Jingle Punks, and we talked about J.J. Abrams, and there's, we talked about all of it. Yeah. What'd you learn? What I learned- What did you learn? Is that um, with continuing education, and hustle and persistence, um, we can all, you know, up our game and evolve and grow and change, you know, because if we're not evolving and growing and changing, we're rotting on the vine and we don't want that. So Jeremy has just educated himself and has got himself in this ultra competitive industry and is crushing it. I love it. Mm. Crushed. Like it. What'd you learn? I learned that I'm glad I'm not the only person who gets production fatigue, like mm. producing the same thing over and over again. Oh, yeah. You know. Tension beds, like in your case, and how can you? How can you not? Have oh my gosh! It's just so right. yeah. So you, so say today you have to go home and just crank out another tension bed. You're like, hmm. Oh, <laughs> there's arpeggios. There's a lot of sixteenths. A lot of ostinato. Yeah. yeah. You ever get really creative and just make it out of human noises? Like, oh. <laughs> I don't think he can always get, but I always liked some of the sitcoms. Like, you know, I always reference like King of Queens, like in the mid nineties, it was like a Human cash noises. register opening and closing finger snaps, yeah. like, like honk, honk, horn noises and like weird percussion. Like, oh, so I really like, um, I like found sounds. Sound. So mm, it, if I find like a toy that makes a, a funny sound, I'll, I'll normally buy it and I'll, and I use it somewhere. It gets on something. You know? Yeah. So I have, I have like little toys that cost a dollar or two that, yeah, that make fun sounds. Yeah, that make fun this sounds. closet here is filled with all sorts of weird, funky yeah. Toys R Us like, yeah. like things, you know? 
I used to find myself making a lot of my own sound effects in radio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if anybody used that as a sound effect. Well, uh, we got to we, we gotta oil yeah. that thing, man. You can, but I mean, just the... You could really play with that and make it like a... It has a you know, when you, spring verb. Right? When you hear yeah. some of the monster sounds in current horror films, and it's a gigantic beast, like a Godzilla-type creature, you start hearing, oh, that's a sample of an ape, and that's a sample of a lion, and it's a sample of a cheetah, and they put it and they mash them up, and they... they pitch it down. They pitch it, yeah. The mash it. Yeah, yeah, we found that we have to find these sounds in nature. The only sounds I, I feel like, I don't know how they made them, because when we had our buddy Paul Lyme on, mm -hmm. he played on Battlestar Galactic, he played on all the Star Wars movies. He's like, there are some of these kind of Michael Bay, like... Bass drops. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can't make those sounds in nature. You can't no. make a bass drum sound like that. Yeah, that, that's usually probably by stretching out, like using a certain algorithm of waveform and just stretching it out yeah. to, the, to the nth degree, to basically where it's, it's telling you, don't do that. <laughs> you know, you, you take it out that far. <laughs> um, and then you get this... In any other, you know, uh, scenario, a completely unusable sound, but for something like for sound like design, transformers, yeah, for sound design, it's it's not musical, but it's it's almost musical. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, and there's so much composing nowadays that is just the the sound design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as a composer, you get asked to do more of it now. You know, where they want to include it in your actual score now. It's like, can you add some kind of weird thing there to highlight this whatever that happened? Do on you screen? have a reel that's like? Three minutes. Look at me. This is all the things I can do. I've never put one together. You no. don't need to because the work is just coming to you. Yeah, I mean, I probably should <clears throat> sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good idea. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, is with like you know, I remember, I remember, I told you, I was like, hey, Jeremy, this is like four years ago. I got the acting bug, man, and uh, you go, I'm so sorry, <laughs> <laughs> because because you were in L.A. for 18 yeah. years with every waiter, you know, and every Uber driver doing that. And, but all of my my marketing materials are like always up to date, and they're like top quality but they're not really it's not really working right now because i'm kind of waiting for my next job like most actors well i mean it's a tough industry tough and, and totally really, tough. but you got to have the materials yeah if and, someone says let me see a reel and you don't have one dun 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 right other, other than that it's just open casting calls yes you know? so yeah, we had a fun day. Yeah. I'm, you know, we usually get a little punch drunk at the end of the day. Yeah, have you done a lot of these? We today? do these four a day. Four, four a day, four yeah. a day. We just try to have a nice, interesting, interesting conversation. And sometimes Jim gets a little heavy-handed on the fart jokes. Um, <laughs> Me. People seem to like the format, you know, because there's a lot of boring podcasts out there, and we try to make sure that you're entertained and you come away learning something, and then that the guest, uh, you know, finds new fans. And I don't know who in the world would not be a fan of Jerry me a little thank you rich i'm a fan no oh, i feel likewise i've always Ma been a fan yeah massive fan buddy i really appreciate you coming by buddy i love that watch is that a gift no I've, i don't I, i've had it's this very, for a while yeah. I like very it. industrial looking yeah yeah german you know it's like so. uh like from the time machine it's very nice look at this look at this so my little buddy cameron you know mm -hmm. who's had 50 surgeries but is a badass little 14 year old drummer i had a i had a a, a wrist uh like a like a, what do they call these um a bracelet? It's a cuff. They call them cuffs. So I had this beautiful black cuff that I've had for 18 years when you and I were playing together that was just, it could almost stand up and walk around by itself. It was just right. so much sweat in it. And uh, anyways, I traded my little buddy and I gave it to my little buddy and he was so happy and he gave me his. So this is Cameron's. Oh, very cool. Isn't that cute? All and right, so we'll always, re we'll always remember each other. Great kid. All right. Oh, man, I had so much fun here today. Yeah. yeah. Learned a lot. I'm so excited you're living in Nashville and you're keeping the world safe for music. Jim, thanks for your time and talent, everything you bring to the table. And everyone out there, hey, we appreciate it. We love you listening. Give us a five-star rating if you love the show. If you have questions, comments, hey, write us a letter. We'll read it on the show. I got an email address for you, therichredmanshow at gmail.com. As always, we appreciate the school of rock. Keep coming back for the good stuff. See you next time. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, comment, and follow us at richredman.com forward slash listen.